This is the OGA Today. Welcome, everyone. I'm Alex Bastiavansky, and this is obviously a slightly uh, different episode of the show, which I'm taping today from home. Uh, it's been a few months since our last episode in mid-March, and yeah, boy, things have changed since then for everyone, just to uh, put it mildly, as we've all been dealing with the COVID-19 global pandemic that's shut down sports leagues across the globe. The Ontario Junior Hockey League canceled its season back on March 12th. And joining me today to talk about the league and provide some updates on the situation is OJHL Commissioner Marty Savoy. Marty, thanks so much for taking the time to join us here today under what can fairly be described as just unprecedented circumstances. Uh, first off, and most importantly, of course, how are you holding up and is your family safe and healthy? Uh, thanks for asking, Alex. Yeah, it is. We're, we're doing good. Uh, finally got the pool open so the kids can get outside a little bit, but we got the four kids in the house and whatnot and trying to get through school work and missed graduations and everything, but just like everybody else, we're coping and getting by. So I um, hope all is well with you and your family as well. It is. Thank you very much for asking out in BC, which makes it a little bit more difficult, but that's what Zoom's for. Lots of that so far, so it's coming handy for sure. Um, as we mentioned before, uh, off the top of the sports around the globe, just came to a standstill back in March. Uh, it happened so quickly. One week, the OJHL, of course, finishing up the first round of the playoffs. The next, the season, shut down. Uh, I wanted to find out from you, and it's a question I've been getting from, from fans as well. Uh, take us through the lead up to that decision and just how quickly it all went down. Yeah, it's a great question, Alex. It, 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 see, it seems like a lifetime ago that this actually happened because we've been dealing with so much trying to get you know, what's, what's going on. But so the way it rolled out is that once COVID started coming out in the public and everything was happening, we were aware of it. Um, through our board of directors, they, they, they kind of gave me a heads up that, that be prepared in case something happens. And so we were looking into different things. And then I think when the NBA did what they did and the, the leadership when they shut down, it was kind of a ripple effect for everybody. So originally what our league had decided independently was to postpone our league um, and just see what was going to happen. Um, and then within hours, I'd say 12 to 24 hours from that, the CJHL and Hockey Canada came out with them that they were shutting the season down. So we followed suit obviously with that. So our original plan was to kind of postpone it for um, see what was going to happen and then once Hockey Canada came and did what they did uh, which which was not an easy decision I know I know the process they have to go through we shut down a league they shut down a country um, the, the people that run the, the, the national body out in Calgary listened to medical advice um, they have a CMO that they've dealt with and it was not an easy one for them but once they made that decision um, we had to all follow suit yeah so originally uh, there was a hope it was, originally it was a postponement so there was a hope that the season could somehow be salvaged, or restarted at some point, but uh, it was pretty much almost immediately realized that that just wasn't going to be possible. Yeah, so originally what happened is we postponed, and I believe about Hockey Canada's first wording to the membership was postponement. Um, and then there was a, a misunderstanding of what that meant, where they shut down, where they canceled and whatnot. Um, once it became clear of the virus, what was going on, and it was shut down, um, it got shut down, and then everybody was waiting for, okay, how long is this going to be? Is it going to be a month? Is it going to be two weeks? And we, you know, we always, uh, you know, we have to plan because we have 506 athletes under our care. Is that okay? We're going to start up. What's it going to look like? So we went through plans of shortening playoffs. Um, I think there was like four or five plans for Chris Vanstone and his hockey operations committee. They went through, you know, a shorting of the best of threes to um, single games, tournament to, as that window started to close a little bit, we had plans leading in to try to get back to play until it was decided, like, it's just not going to restart now. Yeah. There's no question, of course, it was, it was the right decision. It had to be made. And uh, obviously at times like these now, sports just, kind of gets put on the back burner. A lot of people would love for sports to return, but 
Um, it's at the moment, it's it's just so difficult to do that. And this pandemic has killed hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. That being said, um, I want to step into the player skates for a moment. Um, you know, uh, from their perspective, these are kids that are playing to advance their game uh, to major junior, to the NCAA, possibly U sports. They're geared up to win the Buckland Cup. The playoffs were just getting going. Some players, man, in their, their last year of uh, junior hockey eligibility, it goes without saying. I, I mean, your heart goes out to these guys, doesn't it? What a disappointment they must be feeling after the early end of the season. Yeah, that's the human element of it all, Alex, is that we look back to our league. We've seen a lot of kids come through. I played in the league. I mean, and you, you always remember that last time you step off the ice, and, and it's it's kind of an emotional thing that you go through, and then leading up to that day, whether it's the last one, you're 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old. And for our 20-year-olds, they didn't get that. They didn't get to go through that emotional process of knowing it was their last game. And that's a tough thing for us as people who administer the league for have those kids go through that. Um, not knowing when they can get back and start training, you know, 506 kids that are under our care they they dedicate their lives they're special young men because it's not just you know going to school or, or working out or they have to dedicate everything they do in their lives to pursue to move into the next level and all of a sudden when that stopped I, I feel for them you see we see them now that they're working out and doing what they have to do and so what our responsibility as a league and this is you know the 22 clubs and as a league staff is to be prepared for whatever it's going to look like moving forward uh, but a lot of discussions have gone around our athletes and the impact emotionally that's why when this thing first broke the very first thing that we did as a league is we went to our OJHL foundation through Rick Morocco and Scott McCorry and we developed a COVID-19 support document um, through the foundation to make sure just mentally that the kids understand what they're going through and the support that if they do need it, it's going to be there for them. Right. When I called you a couple of days ago to set up this interview, uh, you answered <laughs> you answered the phone. That was great. I'm on the way to play a game of golf. Just thought I'd have a nice little conversation. You pick up the phone and said, if you're calling to ask when the season starts, I don't know yet. And we had a good little <laughs> chuckle over that one. But that's the million dollar question that you are getting over and over and over again uh, from everyone's calling you up and saying, when will things get going again? So here's your chance. How much can you tell us about that? I'll tell you everything I know. It, this is what the best way to put it is that we're dealing with a virus. We're not dealing with the regulation, another issue. We're dealing with a virus and the virus doesn't listen to anybody. Um, and because of that, the virus is going to dictate when we open up. And, and what will happen from a procedural standpoint is that Hockey Canada has now said, okay, we, we understand that different regions in the country will be opening up. So they've opened up hockey to allow to happen. Uh, but what will happen in the process is that our, our local cities and towns are going to have to make decisions, our health municipalities are going to have to make decisions, and our provincial regions are going to have to make decisions. So once Ontario opens up, um, our regionals, we're in 11 different regions within our league, so they're going to have to open up, and then the towns themselves are going to have to open up. Uh, we do have plans in place. Uh, we have a, a COVID-19, we're calling it Return to the Room, Return to the Rink uh, Committee, and they're looking at five different areas, and one of them is just making sure that we understand and communicate with our regions when they're going to allow us back into the rinks, because we can't do anything until they make that decision of us coming back. Right. I'm assuming you've discussed a bit what sort of safety initiatives might have to be put in place. And to the second part of that, of course, something else everyone is asking about and wondering about is, will fans be allowed? But to the first part about the safety initiatives, what can you say about that? So part of what our group is uh, workflows, hotspots, PPEs, uh, personal hygiene is that uh, we believe talking to municipalities and seeing the Ontario Federation of uh, Facilities uh, come out that there will be guidelines when you go in. Um, on top of those guidelines, we'll probably have extended guidelines. We're going to have individuals on each team that are responsible for this. Uh, things like monitoring temperature and all that type of stuff, cleanliness. Um, there will be a detailed plan. It's going to look a lot different when we go back. Um, the safety of our athletes have to be first and foremost, which is going to be for everybody. So we will have a detailed plan for each one of our clubs that we're walking through right now that will have to align with our municipalities when we go back in. Um, but it, we will be making sure that everything is clean and everybody knows what the responsibilities are going back inside of the rinks. We're going to make sure that our staff are trained and monitored to make sure that they understand all that type of stuff. Um, signage is going to have to be created for around the rinks and in the dress rooms to make sure the kids understand things. So we're looking at every possible thing to make sure that we, we're safe going in. In regards to the question about, about playing without fans, um, this is where you know I get proud of my 22 teams and my 22 governors. We've had the discussion um, and it's an economic discussion. 
it's cost you know hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars to run junior A programming across this country. And our guys do it to move kids to the next level. So when I propose to our governors, we have our HM on the 19th about do you want to start without without fans? Um, and the decision was yes, we're going to move forward without fans. Uh, we have to get these kids back playing. We got to get them back training, back competing. Um, and as of right now, the plan for the OJHL is to open up. If we don't have that, if we can't have fans. Right. Uh, for updates, of course, if people want to see how things are progressing, instead of calling you all the time, they can go to the website, Twitter, Facebook. In the meantime, for updates. Um, Going back to last season for a moment, leading up to the cancellation, man, it was really, it was shaping up to be an epic season, uh, wasn't it? Oakville strong again, uh, Pickering had that resurgence, the South Division was just wide open, and of course Trenton and Wellington were going to square off in round two, which would have just been, I mean, that's the series everyone was looking forward to, it was going to be incredible. Give us your thoughts on the season and what it was like from a play perspective. Well, it started again, it starts with our governor showcase and Larry Playfer and his group down there did an unbelievable job. And we just, you know, you're right, Alex, last year, just, it's kind of shame that we had to stop because it just had that feeling of rolling up. It was good news after good news. You go in, you watch some of the teams and the Pickering turnaround was unbelievable what they did with that organization. And, and we had other teams with Collingwood, what they came out of the blocks and everything. And it was just seemed to roll in our first run of the playoffs. And, and we were talking internally as staff is that, you know, we get out to as many playoff and many games as we want that it's going to be hard to pick some nights which game to go to because yeah. you can kind of guess which is going to be a great game and, and there was some really interesting matchups that were going to happen when we got down to our final four we're trying to see which teams would be going against which teams and those are the fun games those are the games that mean stuff those are the games that create the excitement um, you know our national tv deal that you were such a huge part of and did an unbelievable job on um, you know those games created so much excitement for our fans and our players so it just seemed like we were rolling down to get into a, a buckling, I don't want to say of all ages, but it's just something would have been unbelievable for us to move forward. And it was difficult that it showed. But, uh, yeah, we, we were really proud of what our players and our team were doing this far this season. Yeah. Uh, the awards uh, were given out after the season was canceled. Uh, we're running out of time. Last question, but I wanted you to comment on the choice of MVP this year. Harrison Israels of the Oakville Blades, who's got a scholarship to Alaska Fairbanks. Um, 86 points in 51 games tied with uh, Kyle Ballers from the Brantford 99ers for the uh, overall scoring lead in the league. Just comment on Harrison Israels, his choice, and uh, a little uh, nod to our uh, Streetsville uh, playing days back in the day, but very interesting stuff. I brought this up on the CHCH broadcast as well. As recently as about three years ago, he was playing double A hockey for the Streetsville Tigers. And then he made the step up and then another step up and look at him. He's was one of the top junior A players in Canada all year. Um, I think it's a great story. Just, just give me your comment on Harrison Israels and what a year he had. Well, Alex, I actually think you covered it pretty good there. It's just an example where, you know, I always see when people ask about Harrison Israel, have you ever watched him play? He's a hardworking kid, and, and the only reason he got to where he's at, he just he refused to listen to people around him. It seems, and he wasn't at the highest level, wasn't at the highest level, but it just he was an athlete that, in his own mind, said, "I don't care, I'm going to succeed." Um, he, he dominated some games. We played. You watch the highlight reels that you guys spin on him, and some of the goals. It's just, those are just what we call will goals, yeah. and he just, you know, he had an outstanding year, and it's something as a commissioner in the league is that he, when you can produce a kid like Harrison Israel to be able to get his dream and move on to the next level. It's, it's not us. We just we just give him the ice to play on it. He, 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 he proves it. So if there's any kids out there listening to this thing, if you don't get drafted in the O or you don't make a team at 17 or whatever it may be, don't give up. Don't give up because one day you might be on a plane to Alaska playing NCAA yeah. Division One hockey. Yeah, great story. Congratulations to him. And I'm going to let you go, but uh, quick question. is this Does this make your summer uh, far busier than it would typically be? with all this stuff going on? Or is or do you actually have more downtime? Just from a personal question, I'm interested. So we're always busy in the summertime, believe it or not, because that's what the planning is. But I would say that this is probably ratcheted up 10 to 20 times. It's, yeah. it's, 
it's because of the unknown and we we've had probably 10 different plans they change daily they go back and forth and and we're not complaining because we want to get this thing going but this is this has probably been the busiest time in my 11 years within the league um but we alex i'll leave with the message to all the people that are listening fans of the oj is that we will be ready um you know we've built the league through planning and through being aligned and whatnot and we're ready to go we have we have 19 people that are sitting on, a, on our return to the rank and room committee from athletic therapists to equipment managers to general managers to governors we're all rolling our sleeves up i'm going to be ready and when when we're allowed to go back in the ring we'll be ready to go excellent and uh get some good use out of that pool i'm jealous this <laughs> summer i'm sure you will with the family so Absolutely. uh thanks for taking the time to update us we're all looking forward to the day when things can get back to normal um whenever that might be hopefully sooner rather than later uh, all the best to you and your family marty and uh, stay safe take care thanks so much alex same to you and thanks to you for watching today. And here's hoping that the next time we do a show, we will be back in the studio and life will have returned somewhat anyway to normal. The main thing is, of course, to be careful and to be safe. To everyone out there, please take care. I'll see you next time.